service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily Podcast is a service of CNC News and made possible by the Greece Chamber of Commerce, providing more than 800 members with business solutions since 1984. The New York State PTA says a series of town hall meetings with State Education Commissioner John King were canceled after King was shouted down last week at the first session in Poughkeepsie. We're not going to go on. We're not going to go on until I speak. Oh, let's go. The meetings were conceived by the state and the PTA to address questions about the new Common Core standards in New York schools. But people showed up angry. The session turned raucous. A number of people questioned why King sends his daughters to a private Montessori school and shouted each other down in general. The remaining four town halls scheduled for this week and next have been canceled at the commissioner's request. King said they were co-opted by special interests. The state PTA said on its website the commissioner concluded the outcome was not constructive. New York's top court has ruled that people who live part-time in New York are still eligible for a pistol permit, even if their primary residence is no longer in the state. The appellate division issued its ruling Tuesday morning in the case of Alfred Osterweil, who applied for a permit and then bought a house in Louisiana. State law is vague on the question of how to handle this, so the Schoharie County Sheriff asked the courts for a ruling. The lower court denied the permit, since Osterweil's house was now his vacation home and the law reads primary residence. The appellate division ruled unanimously that an applicant may have many residences and granted the pistol permit. A Rochester school board candidate is continuing her run even though she lost the Democratic Party primary last month. Candace Lucas was one of the three endorsed Democrats, but she fell 116 votes short in a primary among a dozen Democrats trying to win the three slots. Lucas says she's continuing to campaign actively on the Working Families and Independence Party lines. Deputies are searching for a suspect who snatched the purse at the BJ store parking lot in Henrietta, injuring a 72-year-old Scottsville woman. Eleanor Lyons had just put her shopping cart in the corral Monday night and was walking back to her car when someone ran up behind her and grabbed her purse. Lyons didn't let go, but she fell to the ground, suffered a broken arm, and cuts to her face. The investigation is continuing. Rochester firefighters were out early Tuesday morning when a house went up in flames in the 300 block of Clifford Avenue. Crews arrived to find fire and smoke filling the second floor. Four adults and their children had already gotten out. Some suffered smoke inhalation. Four people were taken to hospitals for treatment. And firefighters said the cause appeared to be an electrical problem, starting with an overloaded extension cord that caught fire. Rochester police have charged the man shot Sunday night by an officer with possession of an illegal weapon. Chief James Shepard said officers Cody Goodfriend and Michael Collins were waved down by a convenience store employee who told them about two suspicious males loitering in the area. The officers spotted a couple of possible suspects on Bay Street. While talking to them, one officer noticed that one of those men, Ty Sean Johnson, had a gun stuck in his waistband. Johnson ran with the officers in pursuit. When they reached North Street, police said Johnson pulled out the gun and turned back towards the officers. Officer Goodfriend then shot him. Johnson is recovering at Strong Memorial Hospital. The officers recovered a sawed-off shotgun. The investigation is continuing. And Rochester police are looking for a man who triggered a three-car crash yesterday morning, Monday morning, and then ran away. It happened near the corner of North Clinton Avenue and North Street. A speeding SUV crashed into the rear of a car that was trying to turn left into a parking lot. And that car was shoved through a fence and ended up flipped on its side up against the wall of a house on Norton Street. The SUV driver then tried to speed away but lost control and crashed broadside into a second car, spinning that one around. The SUV spun too and crashed into a concrete pole in the parking lot of an auto body shop near the corner. Then the driver climbed out and ran away. Police say he faces charges for leaving the scene and that's for starters. To the left of the player window are links to these and other stories, and at the bottom of the page, links you can use to post news and information directly to us. The next podcast is As It Happens. Updates are as necessary. And I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.